We back, baby. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it is the guys you love to love. <laughs> is that it? <laughs> <laughs> the ones you've been thinking of. The ones you've been daydreaming about. Come on now. You know the voice when you hear it. It's soft and it's soothing and it gets you in the more uh, Gets you the groove. And, and uh, it's your boy, Black Fergal, a.k.a. Hype. It's your boy, Rebel, and this is indeed the, the Raw, Raw Hype. Hype. Back for another week of that thing. Uh, we're finna have a special guest. Gonna pop in on us real, real quick. Uh, I ain't gonna give y'all the intro yet. I'm gonna wait till we get them on the line before we, uh, you know, go over the whole intro and whatnot. But, uh, yeah. That's gonna Elevation deal, is man. what he's saying, man. Yeah, man. We're really just trying to get some things. Well, yeah, man, it, man. This about the... I don't know how the order that he's coming out <laughs> in true raw hype fashion, oh, yeah, but right. these next three episodes got three guests on them. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? We expanded, man. Cool. We got all a right. couple other people scheduled coming down the pipeline, and yeah. they're going to be all over the place. They're going to be... Smart people, popular people, <laughs> internet people, real niggas, lock lists, real niggas, rap right. lists. <laughs> hey, Why you uh, got me saying that so much, man? I, I feel like I didn't know what that was until I seen it on Elp and them shit. I like had no, to look my it up. ladies who told us about it. That's why I think they got it from. Because my lady, remember we called her on the episode. And I said, oh, "Hey, what's a lot lizard?" And then she explained it. And then they had the trucker true. people on the show. Yeah, I feel like the phrase mm. "rung a bell" it was very, very weird, yes, man. But you've been saying it lately so much that you got me saying. Yeah, it. I know. I have been saying it a lot, but it's just a funny phrase. <laughs> it's, it's a Especially phrase. because it doesn't explain what it means. You know what but I'm talking it about? It insinuates say? what it means. Not really. Lizard tongue. Right. Lot. But come uh, on. That's a lot of insertion. Yeah, but it's like once you know what it means, it's like, oh, okay, exactly. I get it. Exactly. But it's not like like I say, when I said we're gonna have real niggas, that's pretty <laughs> self-explanatory. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Lot lizard's not self-explanatory. But that's why I like it, man, because it's out there without being out there. Like Respect. once you know it and you hear it, you're like, well, the word says it all. Oh, but for sure. until you know what it means, it's like, yo, what is this word? And I like shit like that, man. I like words, man. I like words. <laughs> <laughs> and there's it's, nothing wrong with it. But it's man. why I, you know, it's why I gravitated to rap. It's why I grab a music making. It's why we do a show. I like how words are put together correctly. You know what I'm saying? That's why sometimes... You know we, I'm big on that. You know if we have like moments of shit that we used to say like a profound or like we in a groove. Man, we don't even say that no more. Because we don't be talking profound. Or... We don't be talking that <laughs> profound. <laughs> yeah, I was telling my lady this over the... Well, just some other days ago. That I feel like when we came back, we matured ourselves up out of things. Let me hear what you mean. There's certain things that were raw hype standards. Like... Profound. We would all like, even though we we still say it to this day, we might have gotten arrogant that we don't acknowledge yeah, it. Yeah, I think that's what it is. But but I'm saying, but like, we, we think our profound shit is everyday speech. <laughs> at this point, it's like, yeah. all right, man, y'all know what we do. Yeah. We don't gotta highlight it. Yeah, I feel like but I was telling them, like, even like yeah, the episode I was doing the other day when I was like doing some of the little singing in the background, like those are things we used to do all the time before. I was you know listening to a shit the other day, right? I was rapping, and you had like ad libs that you were singing, and the ad libs was rhyming. <laughs> I was like, this shit funny. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, nigga, like, uh, Words. I'll be like singing. I'll be like, I ain't loving these hoes. You'll be like, a bitch. And then I was like, I ain't putting up with that. You'll be like, the shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, this nigga's hilarious. And that's stuff that I don't even catch live. That's what I'm saying. But I know yeah. people who listen in the catch it. And that's what I mean by words. I love like a compound. I love compound words. It's why I love yep. double entendres and all these different types of shit. Because I love, because words mean so much. And then we add slang to it so the words mean more. Oh, for sure. So if you can find a way to make one word mean four and five different things, that's what I love, man. I respect that. Yeah, yo. So Quadruple to... entendres and I, shit. Listen, I'm Mr. Tondro. Man, one thing, um, my brother just sent me a text, man. One thing that I commend my brother for, man, mm. is that my brother be trying. Oh, boy, oh, boy. That's all you can ask for. Yeah, man. I really fuck with that, man. He be trying, like, but it's crazy, man, because you try, bro. You don't always get the credit that you deserve, mm -hmm. and it's because there's not a lot of credit given for trying. Yeah. The only credit really is the results. Was that profound? Ooh. <laughs> Took back to 1998. <laughs> That's that 90s raw hype kind of shit. <laughs> but yeah. Oh, oh there we go. Guess in the building. Guess in the building. Oh, man. That nigga hung up on the game. What kind of? <laughs> no, bro. <laughs> I didn't hang up on him, man. In true raw hype fashion, maybe. This is why I love this show, man. Mr. TJ Barnes. How you doing? How you doing, man? I appreciate you calling in and taking the Truly. time to talk to us today, man. Oh, no problem, man. Put him on the summer drink. We got a, uh, 
us tall people got to stick together, man. I seen you six foot seven, man. I'm six foot six. I was like, man, mm-hmm. we gotta, we gotta tell the world how hard it is being up here sometimes, man. Yeah, it, it's it's definitely it's definitely tough a little bit. Let's so. say up here. It's up here, man. <laughs> uh, my first question I had to ask you real quick before we get into any football questions or nerd questions about crypto and all that kind of stuff mm. is: you ever play golf anymore? I do like what I do now is I do like mini golf with my wife or I'll do like what is it top golf or whatever. Mm. And that, that's what I play now just to keep up my um, love of the game or I'll just watch. You like, watch golf? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Like I love it. Like when I used to stay in Atlanta, I would always watch like the Masters and stuff. So For real? Augusta. So. You, so do you like every sport? Uh, not every sport. Like I like to watch just about every sport, but as far as like playing, nah, not so much. I feel that. All right, man. I got an NFL question. I've been wanting to ask someone, right? So I have mm-hmm. to ask you because you my opportunity. Come right? on now. You know, in the NFL, man, do people look at being in the NFL or like a lot of people as like a job? You know how like when you got a job, you like, man, I do not want to go to work today. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Um, like when you're losing, it's like that because it's like, man, it's because uh, the season could be over. We, we we lost like eight games in a row, mm. and it was like, man, I gotta go and do this and do this all over again. But once it gets to like the game day, all that really just goes away. And but for the most part, like when you're when you're winning or everything is like when you're losing and winning or whatever, if it's like back uh, if you're up and winning up. and then you catch a couple of L's and you don't really get that feeling. But if you're just losing a lot, then it's like, man. I imagine why, that. Why, why am I here? I can do something else. <laughs> all right, I'm cold getting, and I'm, everything. I'm getting hit by but grown men. Paycheck, and it's like, all right, cool, it's worth it. Yeah, these, that's these true. Like that bad, so. That's true. Oh, here's yeah. another question I got that's out of the box for like former NFL, okay? What's it like having the same job as somebody else, but they're like rich? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you over here, like, all right, I'm a kick returner, I'm a punt returner, I'm a undrafted free agent, but then I got a quarterback making like thirty five million dollars, and we cool, we talk. You get hit, he get hit, yeah, but his check exactly. looks completely Y'all different. Got the same thing on Sunday, like we got to go get a win, but he like, rich. You, you don't really notice it for real because, like, from from my experience, everybody's been like really cool. Like the only time you notice like somebody is really making more than you when you walk into the parking lot. Yeah, or oh, go, to they, go to their house. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I was about to say things of that nature. I'm like, damn, you know, I got to get my paper up a little bit. Facts. Uh-uh. I, I was about to say, you probably could tell when everybody pulling up to work that I, right, man. Yeah, that's, that's I'm getting hit really too hard like, to I'm, not I'm, be I'm, driving I'm, I'm, that. But see, because, you know, like in regular life, in regular corporate America, the person that got the nice car, like you probably like work for them. Like, but on a football right. team, like y'all like coworkers. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah, now, even with me working like in like corporate life, now I have, I have like a really, I have a Dodge Challenger scat pack. Or whatever. Talk and that I'm talk, like baby. A, I'm a, I'm a regular employee or whatever. And so like all my coworkers and stuff, like, oh, that's nice. Or like people who don't even know me in the building, like, oh, this guy must be, you know, upper management and stuff. I'm like, nah, I just started like a couple months ago. <laughs> <laughs> but, this balling money, baby. I got this so money you're in from cybersecurity now, right? What'd you say? You're in cybersecurity, right? Yes. Like, was that a passion of yours? It it actually wasn't. Because when I was done with football, I was in, like, such a, like, limbo. I'm like, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I've made money, but I just didn't know what to do with my life. Um, and I was, like, doing, like, all different type of jobs and stuff. And um, I, I was working for this company called Carvana. And I'm like, it was cool because I'm, I'm good with people. I've always been, like, a really good people person. But I was like, yo, this, this is not for me. And I remember I was just... I was just praying for a sign after I finished up with a customer. Like, if I'm supposed to be doing this for the rest of my life, then, you know, let me know. If not, then I need, mm-hmm. I need, I really need a sign. And so I had never been on the tech side of TikTok. And um, I was just scrolling through. I seen people talking about cybersecurity, software development. And I just took that as my sign to quit my job and start studying for that. And Look at that I just shit, got a position man. like a couple months ago. And it's, it's been it's been fun because it's like the same type of feeling I got with uh, playing football. So, that's dope. But, look, but look at that crazy. That's man. what I'm gonna say. Look at that. Look TikTok at TikTok is crazy. You doing one yeah. thing 
and then all of a sudden you scrolling and it changed your life. Right. And your trajectory exactly. and your direction. And I mean, I was on TikTok and I heard you tell a story and I was like, man, I don't want to talk to this dude. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And now here you are. <laughs> like for real. That's how crazy TikTok it is. TikTok is crazy. Man. Okay. Wait, no, hold on. Before oh, you no, get no. serious. Sorry. Before we all get serious. When I think of cybersecurity, right? Let me go. I know you about to not let me go. Let me go. No, go. <laughs> Cyber security. I be thinking like, what if they had like, you know what I'm saying? Like a little animated pop-up police that comes up on the side of the screen when you're doing like illegal <laughs> shit. Like, oh, we seen you. Send right. somebody over to your address right now. Oh, don't hide your IP, baby. We seen you. That's what I think of when I think like next wave of cyber security. Like a mm-hmm. little man that pop up on the side of your, your app. That's that's crazy, but not too that's, far. That's funny. Hey, pocket, pocket that for me. Pocket that for me, baby. Uh, I forgot. Oh, I was about to ask you. Was being an NFL player like your childhood dream? It definitely was not. Um, this man's like, falling into careers. Into life. <laughs> was, was falling into careers. I wanted to play golf, and like because like my, my dad played at Auburn. My cousins played at Auburn. Like one of my cousins, he went pro, pro and played at, with the. Uh, the Patriots, the Giants, not the Giants, but the Jets and the uh, then Redskins, but now the football team. And so, like, I, I'm like, all right, cool. They did their thing. I'm going to go do my own thing. And I was, like, more of, like, a nerd and things of that nature. So, like, I, 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 thought, of, I thought about, you know, just doing something else and playing golf. And then I actually made the golf team. And being, like, my dad, being the type of guy that he is, um, he went out to the practice field and seeing that I wasn't out there because he wanted to brag like, oh, yeah, my son, you know, he's the third generation, second generation mm. athlete. He's following my footsteps and seeing that I wasn't out there. And, like, he was worried, for one, for, like, a safety reason because, like, where the hell my son is at? Right. And mm. then he was like, all right, cool. He said he was out here, but, you know, mm. what is he actually doing? What are you doing in them streets? <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, yeah, we ended up talking that night, and then he convinced me to go out and try for the football team. And I only did it just to get him off my back mm-hmm. and stuff. And then um, – and then I actually started realizing, like, all right, cool. I can possibly go, into, go to school for this because I remember um, I got a call from, like, the wide receivers coach for Florida. Um, I forget his name. Um, but it was crazy because, like, he was talking to me. So it was like because he wanted to send me some information for, like, a camp. And I'm like, all right. And he's so like, so what's your ad- address? I was like, I, I don't even know. Like, I was just so <laughs> – these streets because this is this is the time where like Florida's like the big shit. Yeah, you know you got Urban Meyer, T- Tim Tebow, Chris yeah. League, uh, um, Percy Harvin, and all those guys and stuff. I'm like I'm I'm not even like that good yet, and I'm getting this attention. So, mm. um, but yeah, I started taking football a little bit more serious. I can actually go to college for this and stuff, and the rest was really history. But before you got to college, as I see here in my notes, you won a <laughs> high school championship. I won um, a, a state, state championship, championship. With, uh, uh, in track and field. Um, in track and field, I never won a, a high school. Ch- ah. I, I was close. I was close. Yeah, they, need I was close your, they need to fix your information uh, online. I, 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 Tell them I said two things from what you just said. The first mm-hmm. thing is, for someone like me, I, I don't consider myself a regular person, but I'll just use that for this context. A mm-hmm. regular person. It is so crazy to me, to me, to imagine that playing football wasn't like your dream, but you just so naturally, immensely talented that you were yeah. able to play football. Yeah. Um, it was just like I wasn't good at it at first because it took some time. Because when they, when it's funny because when they threw me out there, uh, they, I put I was playing like left right tackle, and so um um and I'm like they're telling me that like, the block and the different type of plays and things of that. Nature. Nature. And I'm just like, I don't even know like what what a trap play is or what pass blocking is or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I remember like I, I, I listened to like my uh, old JV highlights and stuff. And you hear somebody in the crowd, number seventy eight, block somebody. I'm like, <laughs> oh, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> You're like then I switched to defensive dad is, tackle. Like, super frustrated and stuff because he like he wants me to be good and things of that nature, but I'm like I do not know what to do. And it took me um, – we ended up moving from Daytona Beach to Enterprise, Alabama. And those coaches there really took Whoa. the time to really just, like, teach me the game and stuff. And, like, this is what you're supposed to do and yada, yada, yada. And that's when I started to get 
good at it and stuff. I'm like, all right, cool, I can do this, you know, so. But it's crazy because, like, my point is there's some kid that tried his entire life from the time he was two to get mm -hmm. to where you are, and you started late, and you still made it farther. So it's just like the natural talent that people have is crazy, man. Right. It's crazy. Do you then take that same mentality into this new tech world that you're in? Like, hey, I don't really know what's going on, but I'm going to learn it, and I'm going to try to win a championship. Yeah, yeah most definitely. And, it, and it's just like the skills and stuff that I mastered with being in, like, uh, playing football, it just applies to the same type of thing that I'm trying to do now. Like, which makes it a lot easier. Like, I'm able to retain information a lot easier and a lot quicker mm. than most people and stuff and able to, I guess, see things a lot differently than uh, people because I, I've, so, I've been so used to breaking down film and studying different types mm. of habits and stuff. So just cybersecurity just came, like, really easy for me, I guess. And I don't want to just come off as, like, up, obnoxious or whatever. But, I mean, it's the truth. Um, the truth is the truth. You, you're good at this because I was going to ask, what did you learn from football that you can say you take with you? But you just said it. Right. Yeah, because, um, like, I remember I was reading a case about um, – it wasn't terrible tax. It was, like, some type of uh, – I'll use Target, for example, because um, they had, like, a big security leak a couple of years ago that I didn't even know about. And I was reading up on that case and just reading on it. I was like, like, why weren't they taking, like, these type of – um, the reason they had like a big uh, cybersecurity issue because they didn't take um, apply an update or whatever, which is like pretty simple. But just them just going through the motions and stuff and things of that nature, and not really listening to like um, this third party developer. Um, I'm saying that oh, we need to apply this update for this. Uh, I think it was like a credit card issue or whatever. But them not doing that just exposed like uh, like almost like a, a million millions of people's information and stuff. So, but. That's crazy. Uh, mm -hmm. the bank people sending me an email talking about, uh, your information might have been yeah. leaked on the dark yeah. web, so you might want to go change everything. But what they did about it um, was really just they were upfront about it and stuff and wasn't really just beating around the bush or anything like that versus, like, I'm, I, for, I forget this. It was some real estate company or whatever, um, the one I wanted to talk about. And they were just, like, so shady about it and stuff. I remember, like, reading the case. Like, people were, like, once they found out about it before they leaked it to the public, they were um, selling their shares and things of that nature. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> it, wow. It, was some, it was some real shady stuff, but that that was just really just so interesting to me. So, but, yeah. That's like, crazy. all right, man, let me go fix this like I fixed that defensive tackle. By that. <laughs> right. <laughs> you in the NFTs? No, the See, NFL. I don't know about NFTs <laughs> and stuff. I've been trying to like. Me too. Just trying to figure it out. Like every everywhere I go, whether it's on TikTok, Instagram, yes. whatever, everybody's talking I about I just NFTs really got into crypto, man. I'm trying to find out about them, and I want to know, man. Like I have like tons of friends who are into crypto, and like in our group chat, they'll be talking about it, and I'm just so lost mm. or whatever. And it's like, oh, yeah, I got Bitcoin. I got this type of coin or whatever. I'm like, yo, I'm still, you know. I'm good with the little bit of American dollar, whatever. But I, I still got the quarter coin. But who knows what's the value of that? What, what it's going to be like in like you know thirty years or whatever? Because we was talking it's about that early that I'll go in my wallet and pull out a twenty dollar bill to pay for something. It's all just like swipe, yeah, swipe all and watch. All of it. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I was going to ask you. Oh. Um, so you have these companies that have these breaches and big things and uh, like where leaks and data comes out right, and whatnot, right? Are right. you familiar with like ethical hacking? Yeah, and see, that's the thing, like getting the ethical hacking, being more of like a white hat hacker versus like a, a black or a gray hat hacker and stuff. And, um, and it's, it's just funny just because like some stuff can be so easy to fix if um, some companies just took their uh, IT or cybersecurity seriously. But being that, like, oh, they don't think that they help make the company money, but in, actually, in actuality, they do. They help protect information and For things sure. of that nature. Mm -hmm. So, it's clear that it's, 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 like, because, like, a lot of the stuff that I see could be avoided if you just apply, like, a, a simple update or things of that nature. So, if someone cared, simply. Mm -hmm. if so, basically, if someone cared. That's like, crazy. Oh, these are just IT guys or whatever. They don't really do much. They just sit in the office. They don't care about those whatever, nerds. And that's it. Versus. I'm like, and, and some of that is true because I know I find myself if I'm not dealing with like a uh, shutdown or like a certain, something just big going on, I find myself just doing a lot of uh, movie watching or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> 
like, cause I know, um, I, I know, like, uh, if my boss sees this, he's probably gonna laugh. But um, uh, a couple months ago, I brought my my PS Five in, cause I'm like, I work on, I work the night shift, so from like four thirty to one a.m. Um, that's when I work. But um, and usually after like nine nine p.m. is not not busy at all. Mm-hmm. So. I was like, all right, cool. I'll, I'll bring my PS5 in. I'll just, just game and stuff. And then I'll, unless I get a call, then I obviously got to stop what I'm doing to handle that issue. But, um, yeah, like, yeah, we we do, like, mess around a little bit when it's time to take things serious or whatever. It's time to Excuse me, Target. I'm so sorry, but uh, I have my guys on the one-yard line. So can you please hold <laughs> for, like, five? I hope it's five <laughs> seconds, and I'll be right back. Like, I was playing yesterday, and so um, I was playing, like, in my league or whatever. And um, I'm having to help like one of my coworkers because coworkers because he's dealing with a uh, he was dealing with an issue. So I'm, I'm trying to play, then I'm switching over to uh, <laughs> help, trying to help him find a solution. Then I hear like, "Oh, touchdown!" Da, da, da. I'm like, "Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> whatever." But yeah, and that's one of the things that I do like about the tech field because it, it's more relaxed. Relax. I feel that. It's still like a high paced environment. You done had like I, some I of the be myself. some of the coolest jobs right? a person can have, right. man. <laughs> You went from being on Madden to playing Madden right. at work. And, like, it's so funny. Like, my friends and stuff, they, like, so, like, uh, um, we were, like, oh, Tease, uh, you got to work today? I'm, like, yeah, I've got to work. And so, like, the group chat would be buzzing and stuff. Like, oh, let's hop on duty and stuff. I'm, like, all right, cool. I'll hop on. I'm, like, what? they're, like, what are you doing? You're my at work my nephew in the tech yeah. world, he the same way. <laughs> he the same way, bro. He'd be, like, all right, I'm finna advance the league. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, that's funny, man. You done had some cool ass jobs, man. Yeah, and it's one of the things I'm I'm so happy about because I do get a chance to. I'm not going a lot, so I get a chance to be around my family. I get a mm-hmm. chance to still do the things that I like to do. That, um, like playing video games, working out. Um, the day doesn't feel like it's just such a rush to um. To go, go through whatever. To I'm go just, get hit I'm, on I'm Sunday. I find myself more relaxed. I feel it. How often do NFL guys watch film? Man, it's like I still watch film to this day. <laughs> For real? <laughs> I think a Texan at halftime. Hey, man, you really got to get that corner, man. I don't know what you're doing. Catch your phone, like, Red. I, I see the game differently, differently than – um. Um, I guess regular people now being that I played it for so long because it's more like it's me analyzing things, analyzing things versus like as an enjoyment and stuff. But to answer your question, it's like every day you watch it at work, you watch it when you're just chilling at the house, going to like (laughs) um, flying to the games and stuff. Like if you want to be good, you have to be able to know different habits and stuff. Um, Because for example, if I see a quarterback, rubbing his towel, oh, cool. okay, cool, he's about to throw the ball uh-huh. or whatever because he's trying to get his hands dry right. to, you know, get grip on the football. Or um, if I see, like, the the offensive tackle, he's leaning back or whatever. Or block, if yeah. he's always in a two-point stance, I know it's a high probability it's going to be a pass play. And these you only pick up on these type of tendencies when you're watching film. So, mm-hmm. And once I got that in my head because – it was tough to, tough for me to get on the field because I played behind like a lot of great players: Damon Harrison, mm. Muhammad Wilson, nice. Marcel Darius, uh, uh, Sheldon Richards, and all these Chris Jones, um, uh, uh, Pope, uh, Pope, all these great guys and stuff. So I had to do something that was going to be able to separate myself from like the number twos and stuff. And that was just me, just always watching film, picking up on tendencies and stuff, and how. Can I take advantage of that? So as soon as soon as I see seeing like or oh, or listen to the like the snap count or whatever, because a lot of quarterbacks, unless it's like Tom Brady, I know not to really listen to it. But if it's like a young guy, oh, no, whatever, why wouldn't you I listen if really, it was Tom? Hmm? Why wouldn't you listen if it was Tom? Because he's going to change it. He's going to change it. He's going to change like <laughs> his snap count or what it what his calls. Is he that whatever. good? Like for but, real? Hmm? Is he that good? Like for real? Oh yeah, he's he is that good, and like that's why that's why he's the goat. That's why he's the goat. <laughs> but um, go ahead, my bad. No, you good. But so if, like I hear like somebody like a quarterback saying Monday, Monday. I'm like I know the ball is coming out right now. The snap count is right now or whatever. So I'm let me go ahead and get ready. As soon as they flinch, I'm off the ball. Right. Or, whatever. or if an offensive lineman says like, oh, we're gonna um scoop this which is more like them saying are oh, we going to reach him or whatever so just picking up on that type of stuff just really was able to i was really able to separate myself from like guys who are like 
in, on the death chart as number twos and stuff, and I got to play a lot more. So you ever watch Hard Knocks? Yeah. Uh, yeah. How close is Hard Knocks to like real training camp? It's 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 damn near the real thing, and it's tough because like you go, you see the emotions and um, see things like, and what's the toughest part is really just watching like around like cut time. Yeah, that's how it goes, mm. and it's like. Cause I know after I got cut for the first time or whatever, I was so distraught. Gotta and be. So when I made when I um my second year with the Jets, it was around cut time. Now I, I balled out during preseason, mm. and I'm like, man, I don't know if I'm gonna make it and stuff. So I was like, you know what, I'm gonna take my shit and just go home. <laughs> and so I uh, I told them I had to go do like a little emergency or whatever, <laughs> so I can avoid this whole process. Right. Y'all ain't and... gonna cut me. I'm gonna cut y'all. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. And, um, yeah, um, I, I'm at the house and stuff. I'm just chilling with my girlfriend at the time, and um, and so what happened? My agent comes over, and because first I get a text from my D line coach, I'm like he wasn't really clear that I had made it, and then my agent comes over and he's talking or whatever, and then he's like, "Oh yeah, you made it." I'm like, "What?" <laughs> and he's like, "Yeah, you made the roster." And I'm like, "And my wife." Um, and I, I'm hugging my girlfriend at the time, but she's my wife now. Um, I'm hugging her, and it's like I'm just collapsing in her arms and stuff because it's like mm. all that hard work and stuff right. that I did. And I'm like, I'm, I'm finally, I finally made it and stuff. And now it's time to take off mm. from there. But yeah, it like to avoid that whole cut process. I was like, not, I ain't doing that to me. Right. <laughs> but, but, uh, TJ, wait, where'd you go? It man? has to be stressful because <laughs> honestly, you talk about such but, a high um, paying job yeah, that could whole, end tomorrow. The whole hard knocks process is, is is really authentic. Some some stuff they try to play up, right? Because mm. I know TV. it was one where they did like the Texans or whatever. And you seen JJ Watt. Uh, doing all this extra stuff and stuff. and I believe he does the, does that but the way they were doing it it was like they were just playing I know they're up. playing this all up all up because during training camp nobody ain't trying to be up there all day <laughs> right whatever, and stuff so but yeah it's it's really raw I like it I still enjoy it um it, it lets you into the minds of like these players and stuff and it helps like I know there was a player Charles James I, yeah I think it was the uh Texas one um Charles James uh, we played together in um, our high school, not high school, but uh, all-star game. And he was able to get, like, a lot of exposure because he knew Odell and stuff, and they were able mm. to play Madden on there and was able to um, – he was able to uh, gain a big following off that. So it's, like, it's a really it's a really cool thing and stuff. So You keep in contact with any of your old teammates? Yeah, um, a lot of them. I, I'm in group chats with I was about to say Call of Duty um, group chats too. Yeah, that's the big thing, and that's one of the things I was able to – bond with um them because like just playing call of duty and stuff and just getting good at that and i was able to be invited out more to like different things and stuff and mm. and like it's crazy how call of duty just bonds people when you're able to um <laughs> man listen when you kill people together tj <laughs> when somebody you know got your back Revive literally it. <laughs> it's so it's so wow how video games just brought us all together and stuff and it's funny because I have former teammates that I'm in a group chat with now that we're like mm. the best of friends, yeah. and we all were brought together due to Madden and during the um during the uh during COVID. Well, COVID's still going now, mm. but during like the pandemic where everything was just really shut down and nobody was really doing anything. Um, I ended up playing with like some old friends and stuff, and then we end up putting like some more people in the group chat and mm. stuff. And now we're like like really a close knit group. Man, that. TJ, so, thanks for reviving dope, me, man. man. You revived me. You gave me some extra bullets, man. I'll never forget that. <laughs> that's dope, man. You got some dope stories, man. I definitely, definitely appreciate you taking the time. Definitely. I know I said I wasn't going to hold you this long, but I did appreciate chatting it up no, with you, man. <laughs> man, to let you know, I am a whore for podcasts. Like, I, mm. I love talking. Um, I love just, like, just talking about experiences and stuff that I had. And, like, I was podcasting for a little bit, but I realized it's more fun for me to – be able to go on other people's podcasts yeah. and stuff and just and be don't able have to, talk. to do all the work like uh, editing yeah, there's a lot of work and all that it. yeah man because i know like with me i was like doing all the editing um all the like just mixing and mastering just putting mm -hmm. everything together doing all like the social media stuff and i was like it's man, a lot this is so it's a lot. yeah or whatnot and then i'll have on top of that having to do all the other stuff i have to do during the day so man but before you go let me ask an odd question <laughs> <laughs> right but that's not really odd. During the Colin Kaepernick uh, NFL situation, mm -hmm. how was the locker rooms? Like, was y'all talking about that, like, regularly? 
Yeah, and it's funny because I feel as though that was one of the reasons why I got cut with the Chiefs and I was, oh, shit. because I was doing a podcast and Ooh. um I felt as though this was gonna be like in my second career and stuff. And um and so I um I went to the media people with the Chiefs and I was like, Yeah, I'm doing the podcast well, I've been doing the podcast and stuff and things of that nature. And um and they were like asking like what it's about and around the time <laughs> Colin Kaepernick was really big. Oh, you know what it's about. Was, I was inspired by Colin Kaepernick and we talked about just social issues within the NFL and things of that nature and just all that good stuff. Mm. And it was like, yeah, we're gonna and he, I, I guess he took a listen to it. It was like, yeah, we're gonna have to shut you down and stuff. Uh, oh, I was like, uh, what? Yeah. Like Andy Reid doesn't want anybody doing like any type of podcast or TV shows and things of that nature. And it didn't make sense to me. And I could understand that mm. if like Travis Kelsey, he didn't he wasn't doing like a dating show. Right. Um, <laughs> right. And I was like, yo. He out here being flavor flav like, and you can't even talk. <laughs> right. You can't like, be Chuck D. Even, like doing like hmm. saying my opinion opinion on it. I'm just talking about the situation within the locker room and things of that nature. And like, yeah, we can lose ticket sales and things that I'm like, I'm not even that big of a player hey, for right. people to care about what mm -hmm. I have to say. And it was just like a lot of back and forth. Damn. And I was like, F it, you know. Um is whatever. Then I end up being released like a week later. Wow. But your question, mm. like a lot of people see the thing is Go ahead, man. It, TJ, it go put ahead. A, it put a, a, a bright spot on how people think because a lot of people are already talking politics. I remember like my rookie year, Jason Babin and those guys, all the vets were talking politics and things of that nature. But it really it really made a lot of people of color started paying attention to what people were saying about Colin Kaepernick because regardless of how you feel, whatever his motive behind it was right. You're like, oh, you taking a knee to the national anthem, whatever, mm -hmm. whatever. Um, all right, you can see that as disrespectful, but from his reasoning behind it is all right, cool, he has a good reason. And mm -hmm. protests and stuff aren't supposed to make you comfortable or make you feel good or mm -hmm. anything like that. And it started to shed a light on the way that yep. people was thinking and yep. stuff. And because even if you um, don't think he has a good point, you know he has the right. Yeah, you know he has the right, and that's what people weren't realizing. And people were saying, oh, my grandfather died for the flag and mm. all this good stuff. And it was like, mine didn't. You know, Straight up. Weren't, mm. People weren't really trying to come to just really think about or whatever. And But I could see, like, it started to separate. Because locker rooms are already uh, separated already. I remember Gotta be. Um, when Obama was elected. Oh, shit. Uh -oh. Like, <laughs> and I, was in, I was in high school. I was in college. And you could see like the mm. shift, the shift in the locker room and stuff. And how people were like all oh, separating and stuff. I remember we were doing like handshakes or whatever. And then at the end, we'll have like oh whatever. And practice that uh, week was really tent was was really tense between like the people who were for it and people who were against it and mm. stuff. And like politics, regardless of what people like to say, has always been in the locker room and stuff. Was, of course, like uh, and people like to say, oh, I don't want to think about politics. When I watch football, but they were incorporated and in, like the uh, way the flag and stuff was incorporated, yep, yep. like made I think it, it was like deal. 2011 or whatever, a little bit before that. And but the military paid to have that yeah, happen. The military paid. They paid the NFL. I know a lot about the racism in the NFL. I wasn't gonna get into it. <laughs> I wasn't gonna get into you it. Good, you good. But it's definitely there. Like even how we say like it's one black coach in the NFL right now. Yeah. <laughs> You know, and it, that that was tough to really swallow because like there are a lot of more than qualified candidates who should be like coaches and things of that nature, but they keep getting passed up. Yo, because, you a Chiefs um, fan, right? Good old boys club. What'd you say? You a Chiefs fan, right? I'm a Chiefs fan. Yeah, is that right? Uh, <laughs> I root for no. my former teammates um, that I played with, but as far as like being a, a Chiefs fan, not really, and that's because. How I was released. I was about yeah, to say that. Like yeah. What, Even like, do you say that, you're a team of any fan, or did you grow up being a team of a fan? You from Alabama? Uh, I'm a, I'm a, I was a fan of the Houston Texans. Uh, but they yeah. called me in the sixth round saying they were going to draft me, but ended up drafting somebody else. So that, just well, you, you be taking them things to heart, but it's like, man, man, you know what? Yeah, what's that like? Not getting drafted, thinking was, you about to get drafted. It was, it was, it was tough because like during that, like, I felt as though I was going to get around the second or third round or whatever. I mm. played really well, like, my last couple of years of school, so I felt as, as though I was going to get drafted. 
and then you watch. All right, cool. I know I was gonna get drafted in the first round and stuff. Then you watch the second round. It's like, damn, this guy got caught. I did better than him. Mm. This guy got caught. I did better than I'm him. I'm gonna remember you know? all y'all names when I sack y'all. I, I surely did. I surely did. And I outlasted most of them. See? Yeah. Pop that yeah, top, the average NFL career only like three. See, I'm a Jaguars fan, so it's tough. Yeah. Being a Jaguars wah, fan, wah, wah. I know you had little short stints with the Jags, right? Yeah, I had two stints with the Jags, and the first time I wasn't really ready, and the second time I was ready, but it was more of like a numbers thing because the only only reason or only reason they brought me the second time is because one of the defense tackles had went down with the injury, and I, I was on waivers, and so and since I was already familiar with the system, they are this brought they just brought me in. You have any idea but, when, what year the second year was? The second that team? was 2015. Uh, 2015, yeah. No, okay. no, no, no. That was 2016, 2016, 2016. Oh, yeah. yeah. They had some guys in 2016. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, that whole draft process, it was tough. And then for the Texans to call me and say they were going to draft me, then I'm, my, my boy, because I had um, all my boys and stuff were there, and they getting hyped and stuff. I'm sitting there, look, crying. I'm like, I'm about to get drafted. Yeah, <laughs> man, how, how much them houses in Houston going for? I'm in about two of them right now. I'm coming, Damn. Houston. I'm, I'm, I'm my agent. He's heading to like the uh, Liz store to get like a trying to find like a Texas house. Come on. Stuff. Um, Someone tell Malaya I'm on fire. She should work tonight. <laughs> <laughs> we, see across, we see across the ticket that says Chris Jones. We're like, this got to be some type of error or whatever. And so no, it was TJ. just like so disheartening. And then after that, that's when the undrafted free agent calls started call um, coming in, and I had to uh, end up choosing like the Jacksonville Jaguars and stuff. So yeah, I knew it was the Jags was first. Yeah. Oh yeah, man, was, that's but, yeah, stressful, man. man. That's a stressful like, job, say, man. man. It like full, playing playing in the NFL is stressful, especially because like you can be cut at yep. any moment. And not, yes. and might not be guaranteed like the NBA or other leagues oh, yes. and stuff. And that's why I just be so jealous of them because like I, I have like other uh associates that I knew like the MLB or the NBA and stuff. Yep. They just they get so money. carefree. Yep. Mm-hmm. So carefree. Yep. And they signed like, sixty million six years. They getting that sixty million. Money. Yeah. Like in oh, NFL, you, you might get five. I'm still getting paid. And like you have guys, and I mean I understand this part. They will fake an injury just to get an injury settlement or whatever. So they have mm. some type of money to, you can't um, to last them for uh, however long that injury is uh, um, predicated to be or whatever. And, mm. like, I remember um, there was this vet, I forget his name, too. But it was my uh, third year with the Jets and stuff. And he seen that. Oh, it's Brett Favre. That's his name, Brett Favre. <laughs> Who said Brett Favre? No, no, no. He, he uh, I forget. His, he was on the on the line with me, but he seen that he was going to make it. Was it Kevin? Ke- I, I forget his last name, but Kevin seen that he was going to make the roster, and like uh, he he had been in the league about eight years or whatever, and so he had faked the injury and been out all training camp and stuff, and he was supposed to get his injury settlement, but but he came back. Um, cause I think like a couple guys had like a bad game, like, Oh yeah, this is my time to shine. But he came back and practiced and they ended up cutting him like the next day and mm. stuff. But, um, wow. but, yeah, I understand. but yeah, a lot of guys be out here. Um, I'm, some people call it stealing, whatever, but getting over. But yeah, that's I, a, I getting prefer minds. the term getting, getting over. Getting minds. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I understand it because like football is a it's a violent sport. Yeah. Yeah. Like, don't walk away without injuries or anything like that. So I wanted to ask you this before I let you go for sure. Mm-hmm. During the playing careers that y'all have, do y'all ever think about or have people that think about CTE? Mm. I didn't start thinking about that until concussion came out with Will Smith. Cause mm. like, I've been, like yeah. I was one of the guys who's like, man, I'll die on this football field. Cause I had given so much to the right. game. So, and like this is where I always wanted to be, and then concussion came out, and I started realizing like, like I'm not, I don't feel as good as I used to. And I remember, mm. um, I was I was coming home from, I think I was, uh, if you're ever in Atlanta, there's a spot called LT LT Wings on the South Side, mm-hmm. best wings you ever try. Mm, and I was it. coming from LT Wings and stuff, and I forgot how to get home. Oh, I was shit. like what the hell? You know, and it was just so surreal. You were in your 20s. I, I never had a concussion before. Well, uh, a diagnosed concussion. 
And I'm, I did not know how to get home. And I take this route every time or whatever. It's a straight shot. I only have to make like two turns and stuff, but I did not know how to get home. Mm. And I, I had to pull over and I was panicking inside because I'm like, this is not supposed to be happening or whatever. But after that, I started taking my health was a lot more serious and stuff. And like, and just seeing what's happening to guys now, I remember watching a guy who I knew jump through like a CVS, uh, Whoa. uh, window? window or whatever. Mm. Um, I, I remember like recently there was a guy who had walked into like this daycare butt ass naked hey, or whatever. And he was a former NFL p- player and he started attacking kids. He did something, he did something crazy. Cause it was just in my group chat and it's like, the effects of like the CTE and things of that nature is crazy. And then you see Junior Seau, he get yeah. he killed himself, and then Aaron Hernandez and Chris Benoit, and mm-hmm. all these all these players and stuff. It's like, man, this is really crazy. And so I'm glad I was able to walk away with like minimal effects. But who knows what's gonna happen in like you know 20, 30 years, or whatever? Because mm-hmm. like it's not the effects that happen now. No. When you're, mm-hmm. I'm still yeah. rel- I'm only 31. But how are you going to feel when, like, when you're 50, 60 yes. or whatever? I remember, like, my old um, mentors. One of my old mentors just got his hip replaced. So it's like, yeah, you know, like, he's a pretty fairly healthy guy. Like, he didn't have any, like, major injuries and stuff. But just the effect of, like, playing football. Yep. Where's on he that body? That, so. And y'all play professional football. You even got to think that most young black men come up playing football just from – Middle school to high school to you know what I'm saying, and it's just like yeah, it, crazy. It, it, and it's like I get asked this question also, like what I let my kids play football, and that's like a tough thing because I don't want to, you know, hinder them from playing something that right. like they want to do. But at such a young age, it's like yeah. I, I I watch like I go watch Pee Wee or you know junior high or whatever. And them boys out there hitting. Them yeah. like, oh, for sure, man. I'm from like, Texas, and, man. We was hitting in the backyard. You know exactly. what I'm saying? <laughs> like, we hidden. Exactly. And that's one thing that I'm like, yeah, I don't know if I can let my son or my – even if my daughters want to go play football, it's like, y'all can go play flag football first. <laughs> really? <laughs> and understanding how to play because, like, I used to coach for a little bit. Um, um, eighth grade ball and, like, just some of the techniques that these guys be teaching them, like, uh, when you do Oklahoma drill or whatever, and it's like, and that's like, that's a, such a barbaric drill because it does not help with the skill of football. It's just more like a, uh, I guess, a pride thing. Crushing so yeah. that, can, that can happen with that. But one thing that I am, that I hope the NFL adopts is some of the rules and stuff that we had in the AAF and the XFL because they took away kickoffs and stuff. And yeah. like, I, I, I love, I love kickoff return. Well, just watching, not being on that team. Right. Like one of my favorite players is like Devin Hester. Devin Hester, man. <laughs> Devin he used to just stuff. take him and, to the house, man. And um, just taking that aspect out the game is like it's Safer. tough, but like the overall like health is like important. Yeah. And I know one of the things things we did in the XFL, we took we just got the ball on like the twenty right. and was able to just play oh. from there. What was the XFL the, like? Um, it was the the halo rule that's in the CFL for like punting. Like you get the 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 punt return, and he gets like a uh, I guess a, like a five yard window. You can't come within uh, that five yard window. That's dope. Getting that ball first, and then you go. So you remember when the XFL first came out the first time? It wasn't no fair catch, and you had to catch the punt and get hit. Man, I was so <laughs> afraid that the NFL on the XFL was going to be like that because I'm like, I'm not going to laugh. Like, <laughs> that's, that's, man, that's I come over here to get hit again. That's too violent. But that's too much. What's the that's atmosphere like as a whole, like working in the XFL? Is it different? It was. It was like the first time that I I was having as much fun as I did in high school because there were, like, no politics in it. There was, mm, like, no. I didn't have to worry about, oh, this guy knows, like, the coach or the GM. Right. So I should be worried about um, my status or whatever. It was everybody just came to ball. Everybody was just having fun. That's dope. Uh, yeah, shout out to Vince was, McMahon. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was tough that it ended because, yeah, man, COVID. I was just having so much fun. Yeah. Uh, and the same thing with the AAF. Like, I was just – it was one of the first times I was having fun since I had been with the Jets or when I was with the Chiefs, um, high school and in college and stuff, I was just genu- genuinely having fun playing football. The XFL feels fun. Like the yeah, whole and vibe. I hope that like these new spring leagues, like the USFL, 
XFL. I think they start the following uh, next year. Just are able to thrive because guys, like I love football. Like, mm, I watch too. NFL, college, high school, CFL, or whatever. <laughs> Junior I don't watch high. that much. <laughs> <laughs> but it just gives me, like, as like I guess an extreme fan, just more opportunity to watch. And it's the player aspect, like guys who are like on the borderline or yeah. just they messed up an opportunity to have another chance to redeem themselves and show like, hey, I can't play when given the chance right. and stuff. Oh, I so, can't coach that, when given the chance. Yeah, so that's one thing I was thankful about the AAF because I actually got a chance to really showcase like, hey, if I can get in shape, I can definitely play. And I was able to sign with the Panthers. Um, the only reason I was able to stay with them was because my body was just, like, broken down because I came from – I was putting a lot of stress on my body to lose weight, and then I lost the weight, then went and played in the AAF. I think we played about set, six, seven games or whatever. Body was beat up, and then I went straight into OTAs and stuff, and my body was, like, did not have, like, no time to recover. So, but, yeah, it was – but those spring leagues are, like – they're really fun and give, like, other players, like, chances to really prove themselves and stuff. It's needed. I agree. <laughs> TJ, before you go, man, let me ask another odd question. <laughs> you, you, you keep saying the question, like, these questions are coming. We feel like we're holding I'm you. This is going to be our last this question. Is, I got last I'm one. Uh, because we was having this conversation in our group chat the other day because I, my lovely co-host here, my guy, he's thinking about switching his team from years of pain and suffering. So I Yo. asked him, what is the rules for switching teams? Yeah, is that I, I'm a definitely which I'm definitely which because I'm a Cowboys. <laughs> I was a Cowboys fan. And the Cowboys went out in the most cowboy way and they I'm did. talking about I'm in my group chat. I'm I, I don't cuss at players. I don't you know <laughs> do none of that because I understand like I understand what it's like from like the um, mm. the player perspective from like having like people on Twitter cuss you out because you mm -hmm. didn't play the best game. But man, and I didn't do this on social media, but in my in my group, my group chat, chat is lit. You just, I was like a Karen or something. I was lighting that that <laughs> Look at seventy eight. What are you doing on the field? Yeah, it was like calling all these guys garbage and like what the <laughs> f are you guys doing and yeah. stuff but i'm definitely um putting in my because like, i i can't take it no more i can't, <laughs> no, I, can't. See, I, I really can't i'm from I'm, texas I'm, and i live in florida so every year i'm like the jags and the cowboys are gonna meet in the super bowl so imagine you being pissed off like how the cowboys piss you off and then you're a jags <laughs> fan too <laughs> so i'm like man i'm I'm on, the, I'm on the market, man. Oh, no, that I'm an man. eligible bachelor He's like, right man, now. next year I'm rooting for the Dolphins, yeah, man. I can't do it I was going to go no switch more. to the Dolphins, then they fired the black coach. And I'm like, all <laughs> right, man, I need to find the team. But, yeah, man, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a free agent, man. With, with the Jags, I am excited because I feel as though they have the talent. They just didn't hire the right guy. And I knew it was going to be a shit show because Urban Meyer wants power. Yep. And he like the, he NFL used to have power in Florida, Utah. Um, yep. Ohio State, yep. and he didn't realize that these are, these are grown men. Yep. He started mm -hmm. off in the wrong foot by when he hired that uh, yep. racist uh, strength mm -hmm. coach. Yeah, Chris Doyle. And then he brought in Tim Tebow and yes. all this other stuff, and it, was, it wasn't a good look. No, it wasn't. And just the way like he kicked the – I think it was Josh <laughs> uh, Lambeau. Josh Lambeau, like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Then he, he had, had the, he had the club the right incident. One, he, 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 he he probably been in the hospital. Oh Come yeah, on, for sure. Talk that talk, yeah. TJ. Yeah, and I'm, I'm, I'm being, you put your yeah, feet up. James players Robinson. Fight coaches, I've seen uh, players fight, um, mm. things of that nature. So and people have to realize these are grown men. These aren't just like eighteen, nineteen yeah. year old boys and stuff mm -hmm. or whatever. Yeah. And you can't just talk to people any type of way. Shannon Sharp said that on Undisputed. He was like, I seen a player beat up a coach before. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I remember like um, it was. I think it was 2015 or whatever. Pepper Johnson and Damon Harrison are about to go to blows and stuff. I, after I forget what it was, but I'm like, oh, they about to really get into it. And like, players aren't scared to you know say Whip a coach what ass. they feel to a coach because I'm like, you're a grown man. I'm a grown man. If yep. you don't, if you come at me the wrong way, best believe I'm gonna say something about it. Yep. And if you feel like you want to, you know, move some furniture, we are gonna have to move some yep. furniture. <laughs> yep. I felt like that was the problem with that hiring from jump. All right, man. Uh, give me your true assessment on Dak Prescott. Is he uh, a true franchise man. quarterback? Yo, that, I would. Dak is a top ten quarterback. I do. I would say he's right at ten. Like, and this is me just not being like just a Cowboys fan or whatever, because I always always love like what Dak has done. It's just sometimes like with 
watching him is more like a roller coaster versus it like I, I think Shannon Sharp said this like it being like a merry go round like you know what what you're gonna get from you him. Don't. like some games he plays like you know a top five quarterback yep. he deserves that seventy five million that he got this year so, yep. sometimes it's like like yo what are you doing yep. and is it and, and is it more of like is it the coaching is it the play calling or whatever and then I see him miss, missing like easy reads and stuff. I'm like, yep. just dump it off. Don't you don't have to take like the big shot every time and stuff. And yep. um, but yeah, it's 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 frustrating being a fan of his. But I feel as though if they let Mike McCarthy McCarthy go, <laughs> which they bring should. in, like I hope, I hope they bring in um the coach that was with Miami. I, Bro, I Brian Flores. Do. I, ho- I hope they do. It that. ain't happening. I, I know that. <laughs> it's not happening. Man, it's not happening. Man, they brought in Brian Flores, Flores man. It, That's why I want the Jaguars to hire. And it will be like any any team that he's going to – that he gets to, I believe they're going to go to the playoffs. Me too. Noise. Me too. Because he's a great defensive coordinator. Yep. Um, def- defensive coach. And all he needs is a guy that's able to assemble an offense. I agree. Be to I agree. Go far. I, feel, I feel as though he might – Get it's it's him and Todd Bowles that's up for the uh, Vikings um, job. The rumor but, that I heard is uh, that Brian Flores and Deshaun Watson going to the Giants. Woo, shit! And thing is, I heard about them go- teaming up and going to um, Denver, which is would be, would be a, like a great setting for um, oh, the yeah. both and stuff. So. Yeah, that'd be tough. Um, I'm I'm really excited for this off season to see like where everybody's gonna land. Everyone's and- always excited for every off season. <laughs> for that team. Every year, <laughs> I'm usually only excited for like the draft time because I usually can predict where guys are gonna go. But mm. just like all these firings mm-hmm. with like Brian Flores, like was the most surprising because I mean, I'm like yeah. you had two back to back winning seasons, yeah. and they only missed the playoffs, but like by like a uh, like by the last game. week, yeah, half a game, half a game. So it's like. He, he was right there and just needed to get over that hump, yeah. but they wanted to go in a different direction and stuff, which yeah. is, like, mind-boggling because, like, he's been the most successful coach I've had and since in a while. In a while, so. yeah, I agree. See, last year I was excited for the offseason because I knew we were going to get Trevor Lawrence, but then that, that didn't go how we thought it was going to go, man. <laughs> and, like, Trevor Lawrence, he, he's a really good player. He just needed, like, a really good – Real coach. coordinator, quarterback, coach, whatever to yeah. able to help him. And I feel like, and this is one thing I say about quarterbacks also. I feel like they need to sit for like a year or two, or like most of the season, so they can able to see the game. Excuse me, and see how it plays out. Because like you're a rookie, you've never seen like these defenses before. You never seen these coverages and stuff. Uh, and college and the NFL the very different. Like when we would see like a rookie quarterback, like oh, we about to eat him alive. <laughs> <laughs> you're probably picking on him too. It, it, it's so funny because like when I was with the Jets, like oh, we got a rookie quarterback, we got EJ Manuel. Oh, we about to this about to be a cakewalk. That's crazy. Because we're gonna throw some stuff at him he's never seen before. That's and he's, crazy. he's gonna hold that ball and it's like it's gonna be time to eat. <laughs> That's crazy, bro. Barbecue. It, it's chicken. legitimately that different. For NFL real? versus college, For real. night and day. Say what? In NFL and college, they're that different. Um. At least for quarterbacks? Well, yes and no. Um, the serious, um, serious of it in uh, the NFL is more is more because, like, in college, I got another year. I'm going to be here next year or whatever. Or whatever. Right. But in the NFL, you don't know if you're, you're going to get cut the next day. I mean, it might be different now because everything is so hyped up in college. Now guys are getting paid and things of that nature, and it's more being more ran like a business. Yeah, yeah true. How it was when I was there. But just the seriousness of it. And the extra time you have to get get good is like is the biggest difference for me. And that everybody is I want to say everybody, but majority of people are good in the NFL versus mm-hmm. being in college. You can find your fish in college that you can take care of or take or take advantage of. Or you just um, call the player a fish. Yeah, fish. <laughs> like I'm gonna keep. Like when you find you a fish, it's like it's the weakest link on, on the team. Um, it's like when I, when you do film study, like, oh yeah, this guy can't take power. He doesn't take movement really well, or, or whatever. He's a fish. We're gonna keep. We're gonna keep going after that fish. Uh, you got you a guppy. You can't have no <laughs> wings. Hey, I, hey, this is the big bass right here. This is the guy we want to go after. This is like the the uh, the prize winning fish or whatever. Um, so that's the guy you want to keep going after. But in the NFL, there there are very few of those guys, so it's it's that's harder crazy. to take advantage of that. So you have to actually be better than like the. 
uh, Quentin Nelson's or the right. um, David Bacchiari's and things of that nature and stuff. So, shit, man, appreciate you, TJ. Before you go, last question. <laughs> no, <we're good. laughs> I know you a dad. I'm gonna get in for you. Stop it. I know you a father now, man. How does mm-hmm. it feel? Give you give your child some praise here before you leave here today. Man, it is like a wonderful feeling, and it's one of the reasons why I was able to walk away. Well, one of the reasons why I was I wanted to walk away because I was just I wasn't present. Like I was watching my oldest daughter just grow up through like FaceTime and stuff. And mm. I remember I ended up leaving her first birthday party to go try out for the Falcons. And I'm on my way to Flower Branch and the Falcons called me and like, All right, we're gonna pull your workout. And I'm like, I'm in the car just upset. I'm crying and stuff because like I'm putting football before like my kids and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you know what? I'm I'm good. I'm what, I'm really good. Why the Falcons don't want me, man? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's like, like you, I'm, I'm giving I'm giving up so much uh, to be it okay can at least at work out. And I'm an okay father and it just didn't yeah. sit right with me. I feel and that. so I was okay with like putting my kids um before oh. like football and stuff and things of that nature and but yeah, being a father is awesome. Just watching them grow and mm. do different things. Like I just taught my daughter how to blow bubbles and um, cause she, like she's three and she was like, she was being all aggressive. Like, <laughs> you gotta be gentle, gentle, just, wa- just watching her be able to grasp that information and just be able to blow, uh, mm. do that. And just to watch, watching her grow and just do different things and stuff. And I'm able to just, just be a dad and like girl dad time too. Girl dad, I was just right. about to say that, man. Yeah. Yeah. Just being able just to be the, be like, I want to say. I don't, I don't mean like offense or anything like that, but ordinary. Like I, I have a really cool job, but I'm able to be home, and you know, mm-hmm. I can't wait to like my uh, my da- my daughter's in soccer, and she did like the most. Like it was like me analyzing it now. It was like mm-hmm. a really basic move, but she kicked the I ball. Remember, like she last week, she gave like somebody like the shimmy and faked them out. And I'm <laughs> thinking like, oh, this is like Maya Moore or whatever. <laughs> um, oh, hot sauce. Down and, Things that I mean, I'm in, I'm in the, I'm in the uh, gym hype and stuff, and like, <laughs> the other parent looking at me all crazy and stuff. Um, but yeah, being able to experience all those moments and just to watch mm. them grow and just be a part of life is like it's such a blessing. I'm just thankful that I can do that, you know. So you and got I'm not to experience so it all, them. man. You still get to be a father at this mm. point because you're done with football. Then you actually got to be in football, got to do the yeah. tech shit, man. You yeah, had. Like, my daughter is the reason why I got back into football after I left the uh, Chiefs because I wanted her to be able to see that, you know, oh, my dad did play football and so mm. when I went to the AAF. And it's one of the reasons why, like, when I went to the AAF, everybody said I played a lot different than when I before. It's like, man, Joy. I was I was really just – <laughs> going back and looking at it now, I was ruthless. I'm talking about um, people being, getting ready to go down. I'm – Taking their head off or whatever, <laughs> um, slamming people down. I, I was, I was really ruthless. You seem like such ruthless. a nice guy. I know, man. right? <laughs> you just smack it on the line. Like, oh, what you say about my mama? When I was playing before that, I was, I was like just out there having fun. I was mm. more calm headed and stuff. I wasn't talking shit to nobody. I was just, ruthless. How you, you know, gotta be though? But after like I had my kid, first kid, it was like, man, I'm, I'm out here just killing people. Just That's talking, how you talking gotta be. people. It was just, it was really wild, but no man, dope. See, man. I haven't got no more questions. We I'm appreciate done. you, man. Appreciate you got anything you, you need? You want to plug or anything? No, I'm good. I'm just, I'm just thankful that you guys have me on. Like I'm always willing to come back. We Whatever. need you. Come on, like, we you about know, to you ask. Got my number now, so you can just hey, AAT. We need you on the pod for sure. Whatever. Be happy to come back. Hey, you can them, guarantee that yeah, will happen. Know, right? Tell guarantee. them guys don't be alarmed when we end up in the group chat now. Hey, Duck, TJ, Duck, I got TJ. Boy, you introduce your friends to me. I hate you, TJ. I'd be the worst Call of Duty player that you have ever seen. I can play some Madden, but I am terrible uh, at 2K. I mean, not 2K at Call of Duty. I can play 2K too. But nah, I'm I terrible. Was, I was terrible at Call of Duty, and then I don't know what it was like, cause like I would hit my friends up to play, like my league friends, like, oh yeah, let's get on duty, and nobody would respond. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody else was like, all right, cool, we on duty, or that everybody trying to get on. But it wasn't until like I got a monitor, cause I was playing like on like a 72 inch. Yeah, TV I play on a big ass TV. So spaced out. 
But when I got like a, a 16 inch monitor, everything was right there in front of me. I was I, I was bodying people then. So man, I need to get better, man. Like only my closest friends will play with me. Like like do me a, <laughs> they do me a favor when they get on that one. Anybody me, ready man. to play except TJ and Hype? <laughs> like for real, man. Bro, I'm telling you, that's a different type of pain when they don't want to play with you. Oh yeah, like, I'm you start to look like, inward. That would be ghost. Like I'm like cool. I know everybody just came back from work, from practice and stuff. Let's do, we'll get a little bit. They watch right, your who on? Crickets. Yep. Nobody say something. Yep. Yeah, man. That's me on Call of Duty. Well, all that's right, all we got for you, appreciate B-Dog. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate, appreciate, you, man. appreciate you coming on the Raw Hype, man. We'll send you the link and everything you guys, when it's done. Raw Hypers, man. When I tell you about Elevation. Elevation across the nation. He has some dope shit, man. Man, TJ is dope as hell, man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> He's I told you I seen him on TikTok, and I was just like, man, I want to talk to him. Yeah. And again, as we can see, good job to you, because he has great conversations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, almost he like told a, a story out there about a quarterback getting his jaw broke. Yeah? Yeah. See, so I, was like, <laughs> I was like, all right. But um, honestly, I said I was going to take a page out of Amp Book yesterday and start like reaching out for like cool guests that mm. I see. But I already already did it. You already did it. Yeah. Come on. But, but this now is an example. I know I want to continue. Because this is an example of it being done correctly and done Oh, right. yeah. And like, he got to come back. Yeah, he got to come yeah, back. Come on. We got to get in that group chat, baby. I know, man. I'm trying to play some, uh, some Madden or I some, know, right? some something. I think I got, uh, what's his name? Uh, Odell in the yeah, group chat. Yeah, Odell. They're like, all right, this is a uh, league. It's 100,000 to get in. I'm like, all right. <laughs> I, I, I didn't know it was going to be this way. Uh, can, can I commentate, guys? <laughs> Odell catches in the corner. <laughs> like, well, yeah, man. Are they about to flank you? Man. No, man, that's a good interview, man. Yeah, Shout out to dope. DJ. But like you said, but like even like he said, man, his experience is a very... You can't ask for too much more. Yeah, he got to taste a little bit of everything, everything. Man. I meant to tell him at the end, sadly. I said, well, man, being in tech, at least you ain't got to worry about no CTE, man. You good, you free and clear. <laughs> but well, now... No, but I'm saying he Shit. got he was in there. He ain't really have too much aside for not knowing how to get home yeah. from Magic City. Yeah. Is what he wanted to say. But he talking about some wing spot. He wanted to say Magic City. But shit, but, man, we don't know if one hit will fuck you up. Because like I said, I played football my whole life. I think about that even for myself. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But I'm saying, but look at his look at his eye. He was able at least at this time to have the experience, yeah. come out clean, yeah. still have time with his family. No his family saw said. him on yeah. screen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So now he's like, yeah, my dad was whipping ass back in the mm-hmm. day. You know what I'm saying? He He's yeah. in a, a field now that's the future. Right. So he ain't got to worry about getting cut next yeah. week and shit like that. Yeah. And, the, man, he, and then even, he's a third generation, so he saw his father and brothers in them ball out. Yeah. So I thought about that for TJ like... TJ got like uh, one of the greatest lives. I swear, he really do. He got a dope life. It made me, I was going to ask him, and I kept thinking about it, but I never got to ask him. I was like, I want to know how his childhood was. Mm. We'll have to get into that. Know, like, next one, because um, he talked about his pops encouraging him mm. and shit like that, and he... Doing it to get him off his back. Yeah. And then but then end up loving it. Yeah, so we're going to... I want to know about that. I like man. that, man. There yeah, you go. Man. So Raw Hype going to have some more guests on here, man. Have some of these good conversations. Yeah, man. Hey, I like that, man. I'm really yeah. happy for that, man. That yeah. went beautiful. And we set it up good. We're yeah. like, yeah, man. He I, knocked it out good. You can see, uh, he, you know, he needed to leave, but he was like, man, I'll answer your next yeah, question. Yeah, <laughs> he was like, yeah. hey, why you keep saying man, uh, no. odd questions? I don't know how long it was, but I was like, man, I only need like 20 minutes. I know, shit. This shit was damn an hour. Damn, so for we started real? at 11. He called probably at 11.10. Damn. Good conversation. My man. bad, T. <laughs> My bad, T. Nah, but I had to holler at him, T's, man. T's hang up the phone and he's back to work. I swear. <laughs> he's like, he's like, what you did just now? And then, like, like, I was yeah. like, I'm going to hit him up afterwards. Be like, man, my bad to keep you that long. He's like, yeah, I was at work. I was, <laughs> I, was at work. I, I was helping Target and Walmart with that breach they about to have. Yo, it's crazy that, like, in retrospect, not to put this on him, but to essentially say that your like, information and shit get leaked from companies because they don't give a fuck enough. Exactly. But that really is the obvious reason. It's the obvious reason. If I give you my information, it's like if I tell you a secret and somebody else hit a secret, you didn't care that much to keep that motherfucker. You're the only person I told, goddamn. But like, what I like, when I said that he agreed with, which is what it is, he's like, you just want somebody to care. Yeah, he's like, yes, should. I just need more people to care because yeah. if you care, you won't leak. But see, that's why they want to do this blockchain Web 3.0 shit mm-hmm. where that shit is unreachable to people and shit. Where they yeah. can't, oh man, shit is crazy, man. Man. We didn't have like three guests in a row, bro. Like, if we can keep it, it up, bro, that'll be dope, man. Mm-hmm. Come on, man. Because I always have a guest would like really change it up. Absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. I liked how, again, it was seamlessly good. Man. It was, man. 
Things are never seamlessly good with what, those guys. That's why I don't want to There's always it. some kind of technical <laughs> issue. There's a uh, something explode. Like yesterday, we were trying to record. The light kept falling right. and shit. Like, <laughs> hmm, bam. Hmm. That's like I about to come. Nah, nigga. Bam. It's like, so, yo, what the? So, yeah. It was like, it's like like you said, I don't want to jinx it and shit. It's like, uh, did, uh, next topic. Like, Leah, yeah, let me go and listen to the audio and make sure it actually recorded and shit. But, yeah, no, man. But that was dope, man. We rapping at the end? Or are we even Shout calling out. this the end or we keep it going, man? I don't need to leave for like 20 more minutes. Well, let's keep it minutes. going, man, because you ain't got time to uh, do shit, nothing. I'm else. still rapping, though, man. Nah, put it on, boy. Yeah, put on man. TJ. I'm going to put up uh, <laughs> NFL beat. I'm going to put up NFL type beat. Now, I'm putting TJ type beat, hey, bro. We should add TJ, man. We need Since he don't know about NFT, we learn about NFT. We should get in on an NFT together. I swear, once we know about NFT, we're going to be able to talk about them, man. <laughs> hey, NFTs. Yeah. NFL. <laughs> Might as well Yeah Yeah I just rung a nigga bell Woo Y'all know what it is baby Ah We was just talking to TJ FaceTime call Three way <laughs> Three niggas having conversation Woo Talking about things that like, Well we didn't No We actually was having a discussion Uh huh And then we started talking about concussions Uh huh I hope I never ever get one Yeah and I would never give the game to my son unless he wanna play. Uh. Unless he threw the ball all day, juking, shaking, then go that way. Ooh. He like the running back, keeping the hoes running back. Uh-huh. I got a hundred racks, trying to get me like a hundred packs. Uh. And I'ma move them, never lose them. I'ma cruise and I'ma, uh, and I'm riding in the movies. In the I'm a, movie. I'ma watch me a movie or two movie. and do things that you could never do. I might play in NFL, uh-huh. I might do the security. I might spit a verse and now the whole world fearing me. Uh-huh. The whole world hearing me. Uh-huh. The whole world see that uh-huh. I'm lyrically the d- man. <laughs> <laughs> we should make those balls an NFT. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were gonna say something. Else. I didn't even know where to go. Hey man. Hey, I remember playing Pee Wee League, <laughs> juking and shaking. <laughs> Now I'm in the NFL money I'm making I'm pulling up in the driver's spot I seeing Tom Brady and what he got Woo. I'm like damn I just got hit by three niggas on the D-line uh. While he roll up in a Lamborghini ain't mine I'm trying to buy me a belly <laughs> Nigga don't tempt me But the money that I got compared to yours is some pennies But look, I'm good Y'all can have the game I'd rather do some tech shit It's all the same I'ma use the things I learned to make me some bread And hopefully help my teammates get ahead Deep out here. Hope I don't lose a leg. Huh. In this world, you don't lose your leg. We Y'all niggas out here losing bread. What you say, man? I'm playing Call of Duty all oh, the time. I know <laughs> you, you know were gonna do, <laughs> I know you were gonna do my man, man. Shout out to Raw Hype. Shout out to Raw Hypers, man. Shout out TJ for pulling yeah, up on man. us, man. Hey, you want to know something that like that he said that was super duper crazy, man? Yeah, but it's when he was like, man, Tom Brady really liked it. Yeah, he he couldn't even like. Like, it's the kind of shit that make you think of LeBron James and Kobe Bryant mm-hmm. and Michael Jordan and Deion Sanders. Like, no, they, they really like that. Like, are they that good? Man, he the goat, man. Yeah. It's like, I didn't really have this that. conversation so much and was proven really so much that. that I have nothing else left to say. Yeah, I'm like, that's crazy. Because, like, not to Tom Brady's level, but this is another reason why it's hard to be a Jaguars fan. Because at the end of the day, the Jaguars could lose every game, mm. but they have Jalen Ramsey and he liked that. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, like when they talk about him and skipping them, talk about him, they're like, he's the best in the game, and there's no discussion. Mm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's people that come along that they like that, and he the cream of the crowd. He's like, nah, he like that. He's like, I don't even listen to what he say. Because if, no, if I do, he going to trick me because he going to say something. That's what I was about to say. He was talking generally, but then in his generalization said, oh, but not Tom. No, I don't listen to what he said. <laughs> He could have said anybody, yeah. man. Somebody, not, not Tom. Don't believe a damn thing. <laughs> yeah. He'll switch it up. They, they, that's what's so crazy about when somebody is really, really, really good or something. Yeah, it's man. crazy, it's bro. It's like that kind of undeniable. Like I said, when we talk about like LeBron James, it's like, man, I don't even want to hear anybody not saying he the GOAT, man. Do shit. Because like what you, what you see him do, do how long you see him do it. Do shit. Like uh, who it was? I think it was Draymond. I think Draymond said, LeBron's about to have the youngest to do and the oldest to do. Oh, yeah. All the records that are the youngest <laughs> and the oldest in the NBA. What kind of shit is that? That's true. <laughs> All the youngest to ever and then the oldest to ever. It's really impressive, man. He's the only player right now that got 30K points, I think. 
10 or 20K rebounds, rebounds and 9K. That's assists about or something right. like that. It's like the yeah. only player yeah. ever. Yeah. Because like I always say, like with LeBron, it's like, okay, you can say he's not better than Jordan, Kareem, Kobe. You can pick whoever. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But I'm compl- as I always say, I'm completely fine with somebody saying LeBron James is the best player of all time. Mm. But some people try to act like he not like that. <laughs> That's a terrible thing. You feel what I'm saying? He liked that. Yeah, he liked it. You know what I'm saying? Like, he uh, liked it. Like, Yeah, man. Undeniably man. so. Hey, man. and this is not even on no delusional shit. This is not no delusional shit at all. But people listen to the raw hype, and they come here and watch us do the raw hype, and they be like, they like that. And that's mm. dead ass. That's dead ass. Mm. Like, I text TJ and said, we finna do our intro. He said, cool. I said, I'm ready when you are. We live. He called. We do a podcast. Mm. We in the call. The podcast still going to win. Pause. We ain't stop. Mm. We didn't rap. Mm. We ain't have no idea what we was going to rap hard, about. Dude. Exactly. You know about <laughs> it. It's like, I'm not Tom Brady of podcasting. But maybe I'm, we is. I'm not LeBron James of but podcasting. But maybe we is. But maybe we is. That's what I'm going to name the episode, nigga. Maybe we like that. <laughs> maybe we is. Listen. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe we is. Maybe we is. Featuring TJ Barnes. Come on, baby. Maybe we is. But no, man. You know me. I'm a humble person. Listen, keep it real. I know when I rap, that shit be dope. But oh, yes. I will always just come back and be humble. Yes. I mean, I appreciate you even liking the things yes. that I say. One thing that, oh, not, not to confuse you. One thing about it, though, is people don't always know how dope it is because people don't really realize that you're making up rhymes off of the top of your head. And when your favorite rapper goes on Sway in the morning, he's not but, doing that. But not that. only that, man. He's well, not doing the that. The level of difficulty we add is we talk about, we rap about what we what just we talked just about. just talking so, about. And, but we done over 100 episodes. <laughs> so we can't re-rap we the do, same rap. We do it every Every week. Every week. It's expected. <laughs> right? But no, I say all that to say, man, we like that, yo. Yes, Everybody bro. doing podcasts and yes, shows and bro. shit, it saturates the game. And then it make us look like just someone else that does it. Maybe we and, is. And, I, and I'm not saying it in a delusional way. Like, for real, we like that. <laughs> but no. If, uh, newcomers, anybody who here for TJ, Dead y'all might ass. not know, man. We like that. We like that. <laughs> <laughs> like that. Because it's not easy to do. It's not, man. Even ju- people do it all the time. They fall off. They don't. It, that's not entertaining. Yeah. It's not good. Just we it. come in here every week, and even on off games, we put up yes. numbers. The only explanation yes. is we like that. Yeah, we like that. Man. Put a beat on, man. man. I gotta put a beat on. No, we gotta man. talk about ourselves, man. Listen, we do a lot of humbles, and after this episode, we go back to being humble. We don't want to use this TJ episode as a way to get out of ourselves. We like that beat type beat. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. But. but we like that, man. And we we can say we like that because how hard it is to be that way. Woo! You know how hard it is to wake up every morning <laughs> and, and put up a triple double? Huh? To bowl on them? Bowling! I put my shoes on every morning. Woo! I know I'm finna win before I start yawning. Yeah. What you gonna do? Shit, I don't know. Win. What you about to get a lot of money to spend? Uh. We got NFL players on the show. Yeah. We even got pimps on the way, on the low. <laughs> and about to send us a hoe. And we will not be sucking the toe. Nah. How to let them know off real. Yeah. Me and me, we jump on and get off shit. Yeah. They say you like that. I say, yeah, bitch. They say who it is. Raw hype up in this. We in here. Listen. Let's up. have a beer. It's a new year. Uh, it's nothing we fear. Uh, if you want to fight, we going to strike back. Uh, we didn't told them once. We, we like, like that. that. We like this. Uh, they like us. Uh, and if they don't, we don't give a fuck. Uh, <laughs> Y'all all know it. My wrist snowing. Ooh. My piece glowing. Ooh. Your bitch hoeing. Ah. Hell yeah, she'll never change. Every week we consistent, we never lame. Never lame. Heavy in the gang, you heard about us. Uh, and then we murder every flow, everybody. Whatever the league, we number one. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Views go.
showing up. That's true. Subs going up. That's true. It's clear as day. Raw hype is blowing up. That's true. DJ on the screen. Look, you seen him. Uh. Every single week we will it beaming. <laughs> we the champion. It's a runaway. We running back. We tell them haters to underlay. <laughs> Go ahead. Get up out our face. The Raw Hype Show. The best in the place. Uh. And next week we gonna be right back. Uh. The question you ask, the answer is we like that. <laughs> Hey, that, was <laughs> that was horrible. I'm done fucking with oh, you today, man. man. I'm done. This is the end of the episode, man. I'm Yo, done fucking But shout with out to Rivals, man. man. Y'all, know, we've been holding oh, that man. in. That was I was funny. telling hype before, man. Uh, we, no shit, we saying that at the beginning of this episode. We used to be more profound. We used to do yeah, a lot. Yeah, yeah. And then we switched up a little to kind of conform. That's true. To what? You know what I'm saying? That's we was true. a little more sensitive. Yeah, we, we, start, was a little yeah. more, we even why, started talking about more trending topics. Shit, and like that's not our bag. Yeah, that's so not So even our bag. when I'm asking TJ questions, I get my persona. So I go, hey, I'm going to ask you an odd question. Yeah. It might not be odd, but I don't want to, you know, come off like that guy. But this year... With all the promo that's going on, all the new people that's jumping on, all the new people that's messing with us, man, we finna show y'all why we like that, man. This ain't yeah. a fluke, and yeah. it's very hard to do. I'm going to give an example of how we like that. Give right? It. We just interviewed an NFL player. Mm -hmm. In the history of you ever watching any professional athlete ever be interviewed, mm -hmm. have you ever heard anyone ask them the question, what's it like to have the same job as somebody else except for they rich <laughs> and you not? <laughs> Have you ever heard it I in the history? And, but I, when you said the question to me, I was like, that's a hype question. Yeah, but it's a logical question for yes. someone like me to think. That's what that's what I'm going to think. Because at the end of the day, y'all job is the same. Mm -hmm. Y'all job is to go out there and try to win on Sunday. Mm -hmm. And you might make $10 million today, and I might make 30000 <laughs> <laughs> and I got to go out there with that same energy to win. Like, yes, mm. and I will. You feel what yeah. I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, we all making a lot and we all professionals. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? So that's a question. That's why that's an example of what I say, why we like that. You'll hear somebody, will you, you'll hear us do something in a way that's never, ever been done. Before. How much time they had those white people, black people have conversations. But when the raw hype sit down and they do it, it changes the landscape. It's, uh, man, I feel like y'all think we play it. <laughs> we is a little bit, but that's the wrong hype. We play a little bit, but we be dead ass yeah, serious. That's true. Yeah, we are playing, but we are but, serious. But are man. we? But no, but yeah, so my, to, uh, uh, to add on to what you're saying, some of these raw hype interviews you'll see, we're not interviewers. We just nah, know how to have to good, you. exactly, we know how to have yeah. good conversation that's with That's why people. I said I still want to talk to Boosie. Exactly. Because you can go on Vlad TV all day a million times. I'll still have questions for you, for you that no one else has ever, ever asked. asked you before. Which is like Which is the root of who the... Me. But it's because we want to know about the person. Yeah. Most people want to know about what they're doing yes. and, and all that. Yes. It's like, man, listen, you a father now. Because we talked about all this. I heard the kid in the background. I was like, nah, we got to ask TJ about that father life. Straight up. Because we be on here helping people be better fathers. Yeah. How you feel about being a father? Look at that man. He started rubbing himself. Yeah. Man. Yeah. And that's why when he said the Tom Brady thing, I had to interrupt him right then. I, like, is he too. really like that? You know what I'm saying? Because, like, you hear people say it, but it's like, he look at it like, man, I'm done playing football. <laughs> I'm not trying to be on your TV mm -hmm. show. This the honest answer. Or I said his name for a real reason. And I feel like that's why we'll be able to get some of these good out of these people is because... They ain't thinking this shit ending up on Sports Center or any of well, these yeah, major sports so, TikTok or anything. Exactly. So yeah. we'll they'll probably they give us, us the real. Yeah, they'll just tell us what's Because we gonna ask. Oh yeah, I wanna hear it. I wanna hear it. That's all it is. Yeah. It's, I'm not trying to shock jock you. That's why nah. I say things like this might be an odd question. I just wanna know. Yeah, I'm probably really interested. Like I said, I wanna <laughs> know what it's like to be at work with somebody that's rich. <laughs> like that is because um, my my um, my brother wife nephew was in the uh, NFL right mm. and he said that he'll be in the locker room <laughs> so he'll say something like they watching the game or whatever and he'd be like man yeah man I think Buffalo gonna win he said one of the veterans walk up to him be like bet twenty thousand. <laughs> Like, oh, he's like, hey, man. He's like, I don't have to. Well, what about a gentleman's <laughs> bet? <laughs> it's like, oh, well, shut up then, fish. I'm like, <laughs> right. Shut up, fish. I'm like, that's a weird dynamic for a job. <laughs> so you feel what I'm saying? Like, that's a very weird dynamic for a job, right? That's a great question, man. Yeah, so I'm sorry I had to know. Yeah, so that's an example of why we like that, man. Yeah, man. Sorry. That's all I got, man. <laughs> That's all I got. I know. We need to shut it down before we say some unlike that shit. Right. But it's hard to do.
The raw hype dot com. The raw hype dot com. Cops up, man. Uh, again, we got the Bears coming out for Valentine's Day. Like I call it, man. Don't let no one break your heart. The raw hype said so. See, okay. The kind of play on words. I love them words, man. I don't know uh, what he be talking about. But come don't on, it's not nobody. up yet. So hit me up however you can hit us up. Raw Hype on anywhere. Go be a Patreon. We need a couple more so we can hit our milestone. And then we got something we'll do for y'all when we hit that milestone. And hey, don't let nobody break your heart. Uh, see what I'm saying? That's that's what I'm going to go with. That's don't the let advice nobody break your heart, man. I feel like people don't try to let that happen, though, man. Because people, misery love company, man. We're going to let y'all out on a profound moment. Misery <laughs> love company, man. And people don't want to see themselves sad alone. Just like they don't want to see themselves broke alone. If you and me broke together, we happy. You get money, I don't get money. Most people will then be sad with you. I so don't then, believe that, actually. Well, not with us. No, I'm just oh, saying, period. Okay. I feel like people that's miserable don't know nothing else. That's what I'm saying. They want company. They want... I- a miserable person wants, man, I ain't got no money today. Man, shit, I ain't got no money neither. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they want. They don't want, don't man, feel that way, man I'm broke. Nigga, I just bought a new whip. <laughs> it's like we were just here with a job. Exactly. <laughs> you broke. <laughs> It's like that's a, that's people, man. They when you they miserable, funny, they want you to be miserable with them. I'm so they'll put you in a position man. to be miserable so they can say, like, all right, you here Look, with me man. now. I don't know how we got here, but I'm out, man. We out of here, baby. You, you hilarious. How you raw hype, but we raw hype responsibly. Ooh.